Phillies Bramson. Phillies Bramson, born 1941, is an American artist based in Chicago known for richly ornamental, excessive and decadent paintings described as walking a tightrope between edginess and eroticism. She combines eclectic influences such as kitsch culture, Rococo art and Orientalism, in juxtapositions of fantastical figures, decorative patterns and objects, and pastoral landscapes that affirm the pleasures and follies of romantic desire, imagination, and looking. Bramson shares tendencies with the Chicago Imagists and broader Chicago tradition of surreal representation. Curator Lynn Warren wrote of her 30-year retrospective at the Chicago Cultural Center, Bramson passionately paints from her center so uniquely shaped in her formative years, her lovely colors, fluttery vignette compositions, and flowery and cartoony imagery create works that are really like no one else's. Writer Miranda McClintock said, Bramson's work has been exhibited in exhibitions and surveys at the Museum of Contemporary Art, Chicago and CA, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Smithsonian Institution, and Corcoran Gallery of Art, in more than 41 person exhibitions, she has shown at the New Museum, Fort Wayne Museum of Art, the Boulder Art Museum, University of West Virginia Museum, and numerous galleries. She has been widely reviewed and recognized with John S. Guggenheim and Rockefeller Foundation grants, and the Anonymous Was a Woman Award, among others. She was one of the founding members of the Early Women's Art Collaborative Artemisia Gallery and a longtime professor at the School of Art and Design at the University of Illinois at Chicago, until retiring in 2007. Life and Career Bramson was born in Madison, Wisconsin in 1941, to parents who ran an auto parts wholesale business. She earned a BFA in drawing and painting from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, 1962, and an MA in painting, at the University of Wisconsin 1964, where she created paintings influenced by the Bay Area figurative movement. After getting married, she and her husband settled in Glenview, Illinois in 1966. Bramson found work as a window designer creating the highly visible theatrical displays downtown at Marshall Fields, then Chicago's most prominent department store. In the late 1960s, she taught at the Chicago Academy of Art and Columbia College and enrolled at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, where she earned an MFA in 1973. After graduating, she helped co-found Artemisia Gallery with artists including Margaret Wharton, Mary Stoppert, Joy Poe, Barbara Grad, Phillies McDonald, and Vera Clement. In the mid minutes 1980s, Bramson gained recognition for her paintings through solo exhibitions at the New Museum and Monique Knowlton Gallery in New York City, the Marion de Sang and Dart Galleries Chicago, Gallery Farid Kedat Paris, and a mid-career survey at Chicago's Renaissance Society 1986. She also appeared in major group shows at the MCA Art Institute of Chicago, Madison Art Center, and Hyde Park Art Center. In 1985, Bramson joined the art faculty at the University of Illinois in Chicago, teaching until 2007, when she retired as Professor Emerita. Throughout that time, she exhibited regularly at Philly's Kind, Carl Hammer, Printworks, and Zala Slash Lieberman in Chicago, and Little John Contemporary, and Claire Oliver in New York, among others. Since 2007, she has advised MFA students at the School of the Art Institute and continues to work in Chicago. Artwork Bramson has worked in painting, drawing, collage, and assemblage. Her approach, influences, and themes, however, have remained relatively consistent. She works intuitively without plans or sketches, an organic process she describes as wayward and free fall. My studio is a place for bricolage. It's roiling with stuff in bins on shelves on the floor. The putting together of this stuff is basically is a mystery to me, she has said. Her work can be divided into three main bodies, sculptural and mixed media work 1970s, mixed media paintings and bass reliefs 1980, and three-dimensional works 2006.
influences Bramson assimilates eccentric, diverse social and visual influences. She acknowledges the pull of 1950s conventions of duty, sacrifice and propriety describing herself as a kind of tourist or voyeur teetering between the worlds of her free-spirited, anything-goes studio life and straight, married suburban life. Those dichotomies inform the paradoxes noted in her work Sweetness and Salaciousness, Modesty and Exhibitionism, Kitchen and Art, East and West, Disappointment and Hope, Longing and Pleasure. Aesthetically, she draws from richly visual, wide-ranging sources. Her attraction to pattern, beauty, and sensuality was formed by youthful experiences in her home of Chinoisery, a Western decorative imitation of East Asian artistic traditions, kitsch objects, and 1950s girly magazines and calendars. Later inspirations range from Rococo art to the outsider paintings of Henry Darger to the historical tradition of Persian miniatures and pleasure gardens. Bramson relates strongly to what she calls Chicago's history of independent art making. Both she and critics have noted her shared interest in expressive figuration and theatrical spaces with the city's monster roster artists of the 1950s, such as Robert Barnes, Ellen Lanyon, and Irving Petlin, sometimes called magic realists, Samer Risovsky, and June Leaf. Critics also note similarities to the more well-known Chicago Imagist. In her work's immediacy, vernacular references and unnerving poetics, but generally conclude that it differs in its more personal, lyrical, dreamlike, and inward orientation. Bramson describes herself as bridging the groups, I have the humor and salaciousness of some of the Imagists, but I want my figure to have a certain reality to it. I don't take too many liberties. Themes According to the late critic James Ude, Bramson has pursued what seems an inexhaustible exploration of the inexhaustible wonder of human coupling, its forms, its rituals, its absurdities, its essential and revelatory nature, sometimes its wistfulness and hints of melancholy. While Bramson has remained remarkably consistent in her exploration of romantic love, her work once described as a riddle disguised as a love letter leaves plenty of room for interpretation. Writer Joanna Fru places Bramson in the romantic individualist tradition of intense feeling, love longing, alienation, and morality, and considers art making and sex, including the voluptuousness, risks, temptations, and delights attendant on both themes as the implicit, twin subjects of her work. Dennis Adrian suggested that painting was a place for Bramson to explore states of feeling, dreams, and fantasies that were otherwise risky, impossible unacceptable or undesirable. Bramson seems to agree to me, making art is a difficult, intense activity where I can do a lot of things I wouldn't do out in the world. It's an area where I can function on a dangerous and erotic level. I'm sort of watching myself do it. Lynn Warren suggests that while her work looks nostalgically to a time in which longing and desire were satisfied in a slow, while Bramson has generally been uncomfortable, with strict feminist readings of her work, considering them too confining, writers have identified challenges to the power dynamics of relationships and societal structure in her work. Art Forum's Colin Westerbeck wrote that Bramson's straddling of her private, domestic life and public, artistic one provided insights into the balancing acts required of women that are reflected in her contorted figures, acting out exaggerated roles, and accommodations to traditional expectations. Art historian Lisa Wainwright suggests these insights are also embedded in her strategy of collage, which parallels the way women construct their lives out of many masks, roles, and identities. In her essay, Feminine Wiles, Modern Art's Fear of the Female, New Art Examiner editor Catherine Hickson highlighted Bramson's unapologetic reassertion of the emotional and physical power of the feminine in the face of the fear that the article discusses. Mixed Media Work 1970s Bramson has described herself as an archetypal 1970s art school graduate who abandoned painting in the commonly held belief. She explored ceramic, pastel, objects, fans, beads, sequins, glitter and fabric, fashioning doll-like sculptural portraits, mixed media drawings, 
and assemblages that some suggest were influenced by her window display work at Marshall Fields. Joanna Frew observed that Bramson's use of feminine paraphernalia interwove passion, conflict, and eroticism, heatedly spinning her own self-emergence as well as the concurrent cultural emergence of women. Critics see in this early work a steady, if circuitous, search for her style through successive and ultimately successful experiments. Dennis Adrian later wrote that while this work never fully resolved the balance between its emblematic fetishistic quality and three-dimensional object-ness, it clarified Bramson's artistic persona and afforded her an impressive freedom she would use to powerful, unified effect in her mature work. Paintings and Bass Reliefs, 1980 Three-Dimensional Works, 2006 in the 2000s, Bramson increasingly realized the object-based qualities of her earlier bas-relief paintings. These more sculptural works incorporate assemblage and arrangements of found objects, with shelves and other elements projected off of walls, as in her scroll works first begun in 2006, e.g. A Glimpse of Paradise, 2015. In the scroll pieces, she combines characteristic romantic imagery and illusions painted on long, flowing section sheets with souvenir-like objects that suggest desires and memories assigned to and repackaged into icons. Together, the visual elements imply the unfolding and revealing of fantasies and histories of the eclectic cast of characters Bramson has borrowed from kitsch and other cultural sources. Curating mm -hmm. Orating In 2019, Bramson organized the exhibition what came after? Figurative painting in Chicago 1978 minus 1998 at the Elmhurst Art Museum, which focused on an informal collective of figurative artists alternately called third generation or post-imagists or the Chicago School. The show included artists such as Nicholas Africano, Bramson herself, Susan Dormis, Richard Hull, Michiko Itatani, Paul La Mancha, Jim Lutz. David Sharp, Holly Sigler, and Mary Lou Zelazny, among others. The late critic James Uden, whose memory the exhibition was dedicated, was among those who championed this group, which both built on and sought to break free from the Imagist legacy through more emotionally immediate and introspective explorations of the human condition, that in formal terms were more painterly, compositionally open, and spatially expansive. Curator Lynn Warren describes them as a rich tradition of image-making somewhat obscured by the Imagist label, while writer Deven Golden connects them to earlier post-World War Roman II Chicago traditions through a shared emphasis on accessibility, psychology, individuality, and intimacy. Bramson has also curated shows at the University of Illinois and the Rockford Art Museum, among others. Awards and Collections Bramson has been awarded fellowships and grants from the John S. Guggenheim 1993, Louis Comfort Tiffany 1980, and Rockefeller 1997 Foundations, National Endowment for the Arts 1976, 1983, 1993, Fulbright Program 1988, Illinois Arts Council 1981. She has been recognized with the Anonymous Was a Woman Award 2009, the School of Art Plus Design at University of Illinois at Urbana's Distinguished Alumni Award 2010, and the Distinguished Artist Award from the Union League Club of Chicago 2012. In 2014, she received the Women's Caucus for Art Lifetime Achievement Award for her commitment to the erotic, affirmative representation of female agency and sexuality in her art. Bramson's art is represented in numerous private collections, including those of the Art Institute of Chicago, Corcoran Museum of Art, Library of Congress, New Museum, Brooklyn Museum, Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago, Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden, National Museum of American Art, Smart Museum of Art, Milwaukee Art Museum,